I don't know what to do. I don't know how to motivate my students to participate. I feel very frustrated. What should I do? How do I get students to participate and communicate? I feel like I'm talking to the wall. Have you ever felt this frustrated as a teacher? Well, you're not alone. One of the greatest challenges we as teachers face today is motivating students to communicate and participate in class. What do we do? Well, if you think you've run out of ideas, what follows may be helpful for you. We're going to talk about L2 Willingness to Communicate, known as WTC and Teaching. This presentation has been brought to you by Isela Diaz, Juan Carvajal, Eduardo Ramirez, and myself, Oscar. Hope it is useful for you. The general objective of this presentation is to value the role of individual differences in English teaching, while its specific objectives deal with evaluating learners and teachers' concerns regarding students' willingness to communicate in classroom settings, and ultimately, understand learners' individual differences when teaching and learning English as a form of language. This presentation has been divided in three main sections. The first section is the introduction, in which we will cover the definition of WTC and its main characteristics. Then we will move to the body. Here we will talk about common scenarios related to WTC, provide you with strategies to facilitate WTC in our classrooms, and assess and identify factors and hidden student WTC. And finally, our conclusions. Here we will make a final synthesis of the most important ideas of our presentation. Okay, let's get started. First, we have Isela Diaz. She will tell us a little bit about willingness to communicate, the definition and its main characteristics. As foreign language students, we all know that to communicate with others in a foreign language is really challenging and this is more difficult when we have not yet mastered the language with the proficiency level we need in order to feel confident. Well, there are many other aspects that can impact in the way foreign language students communicate in the classroom, where the main target is precisely to express ourselves in the second language. Those aspects could vary from one person to the other. However, there are certain identified variables which impact the way in which foreign language students communicate in the second language they are learning. There are more than linguistic, linguistic aspects involved in this process. Those variables are associated to the concept of willingness to communicate. So, uh, well, let's see. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the term willing means that a person is inclined or favorably disposed in mind to do something, that the person is ready or prompt to act or to respond. This is an important term for us in order to understand the willingness of communicating. What does willingness to communicate mean? Well, according to Peter McIntyre uh, in this book, Willingness to Communicate in the Second Language, Understanding the Decision to Speak as a Volitional Process, this concept of willing to communicate can be defined as the probability of speaking when free to do so. Second language students usually study the second language they have chosen in order to communicate. However, when they have the possibility to use this language in the classroom, many of them choose not to use it 
they choose not to speak. On the contrary, others choose to speak. This is a real situation in the classroom. And that is why some uh, researchers have tried to understand this phenomenon that they have defined as the willingness to communicate. The first studies about the willingness to communicate started in the domain of the first language linguistic. The following studies try to explain this concept as the result of a personality trait. The concept was studied because researchers were interested at first on the student's unwillingness to communicate. Then, the studies turned to study students' motivation as the explanation of this unwillingness. Finally, the concept was redefined by McIntyre as a complex phenomenon and the result of an interplay of numerous factors. Moreover, McIntyre studied uh, this phenomenon uh, and he did it for the context of the second lang language learning process. Uh, he said that those factors could influence negatively or positively the willingness to communicate of students. And he defined this term um, as a state of readiness to enter a discourse at a particular time with a specific person or persons using a second language. This researcher believes that willing to communicate represents their willingness to speak freely without fear. So, as we can see, the degree of willingness to communicate depend, uh, depends on different aspects as the context in which students are the receivers of the message and the personality traits of the student and those aspects determine whether individuals choose to speak or avoid having conversation. In the article Willingness to Communicate in the Second Language, Understanding the Decision to Speak as a Volitional Process, McIntyre explains again this concept by associating it with the two precedent concepts researchers analyzed in order to define the student's competence of speaking. So he mentioned two concepts, language, language anxiety and motivation. As the previous approaches to the notion he defined as willingness to communicate, he says that many students could experience language anxiety, which is a negative emotional reaction that could affect their willingness to communicate. But on the other hand, motivation has been considered as a dominant aspect too in this field for years. He explains that beyond those two concepts which previously tried to describe this process, there are more factors involved, so he integrated all in a pyramid that shows the different factors could play a role in students when they communicate in a second language. So, as I have already said, uh, in order to better understand the aspect involved in the willingness to communicate, McIntyre, Clement, Dorney and Noels organized in a pyramid the factors they talk about in which we can see that those factors could belong to different fields. And this pyramid combined psychological, linguistic, and communicative aspects, and they could be individual, social, uh, or situational. In this pyramid, we can see the different levels of the factors involved. In this pyramid, we can see the different variables affecting the willingness to communicate in a second language. This pyramid consists of six layers uh, which show the importance of the variables in the process. We can see, for example, that at the top of the pyramid we have the ultimate objective of the process. 
uh, which is the second language used. And then we can also note that to get to that level, the will it, to the level of willingness to communicate, uh, we have uh, to have already the other vari variables at the bottom of the pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, we can see the variables which are more difficult to change because they are influenced by others, by context, or by the genetic traits of the individual. Then, we can also see that variables to the left of the pyramid uh, are more related to the group interaction and the variables on the right of the pyramid are more related to the individual psychological or aspect of the student. By following the layers order from the bottom to the top of the pyramid, we can understand that in the seven layer, for example, the social and individual context play an indirect but powerful role because the students cannot influence or influence on, on them. On layer five, the affective cognitive context, uh, in this layer, uh, students sets the basis to approach the target um, language. Well, according to Jean-Marc Dewey and Livia Dewey in their article uh, Learner Internal and Learner External Predictors of Willingness to Communicate in the Classroom, the fifth layer could be shaped at school and in the classroom. Then, in layer fourth, there is a transition from the most stable context to a context where the variables are defined by the personal motives and expectation of the student. At layer third, the situated antecedents are confirmed by the desire to communicate and also by the perception of the self. We can see here again this interaction between the groupal and the individual aspect. In layer 2, we see finally the willingness to communicate that according to uh, Elaine, the well represents the final psychological step in preparation for communication, which will be a reality in the layer number 1. We have also to notice that this is not as simple as is it organized in the pyramid because inside every variable there are multiple factors to take into account. So why is this important for us? Well, after talking about the willingness to communicate on the pyramid which explains this phenomenon, we can see that the most evident situation presented by the fact of a students talking or not in our classroom is what we see. But what hides behind that behavior, that action is extremely complex and not evident at all. The knowledge about this phenomenon is relevant for the learning process of students, but also for the teaching process, which can precisely focus on the use of, the, of those variables to enhance the student willingness to communicate. Now, let's listen to Juan Carvajal. He is bringing us common scenarios that affect WTC so that we can be aware of the most important situations that we will face as teachers. In the next part, we will tell you about common scenarios that affect people in their willingness to communicate. According to Gursali and Oz, in their study named The Relationship Between L2 Motivational 
self self system and willingness to communicate published in the year 2018 there is a number of conducted studies focusing on the relationship between l2 languages and l2 willingness to communicate in the class both authors say that some studies focus on predictive effects on students like learning experience or anxiety. Fortunately, all of these studies are useful because they can contribute to understand certain variables to improve communication behavior and can help teachers to develop new methods or strategies to enhance the willingness to communicate in students. However, as students, we consider that knowing and studying different types of scenarios is also necessary in order to have a better idea of when and where the learners can show rejection to express in target language. In addition, it is a reality that learning a foreign language imply the use of meaningful and effective communication, not only inside the classroom, but also outside the classroom. Once this is clear, we cannot omit the fact that during different types of communication, the human factor may have a reaction or an effect on its success or failure. Some possible scenarios in which people in general need to put into practice English language knowledge are public speaking, meetings, group discussions, and interpersonal conversations. What is public speaking? Basically, it is the process or act of performing a speech to a live audience. Public speaking is commonly understood as formal, face-to-face, -face speaking of a single person to a group of listeners. However, due to the evolution of public speaking, it can be viewed as any form of speaking, formally and informally, between an audience and the speaker. Meetings. A meeting is the occasion when people gather to discuss things and make decisions, either in person or using phones, the internet, the internet, etc. Group discussions. A group discussion is a group of individuals typically who share a similar interest they may gather either formally or informally to discuss ideas, solve problems, or make comments. Group discussions may be in person or by conducting conference calls, using test messaging, or using a website such as, as Internet Forum. Interpersonal conversation. An interpersonal conversation is the process by which people exchange information or feelings. It has to do with verbal and nonverbal messages. In simply words, we also can say that it is a face-to-face -face communication. Changing the subject, the author also mentions some of the possible types of interlocutors that participate on those situations. Strangers, acquaintances, and friends. They would Hamed Mahdi, who is a researcher in the Department of Languages and Translation at King Khalid University in Saudi Arabia, conducted a study in the year 2014 that had to make goals. First, to identify the main communication difficulties 
faced by English foreign languages students at King Khalid University. Second, to explore the reasons that lie behind these difficulties. One of the observations documented in this study by Daywood Ahmed Mandi is that extroverted students have a high willingness to communicate and like to participate in classroom activities, whereas introverted students are less willing to communicate and prefer not to speak freely or participate actively. The author says that personality traits affect the oral communication in English. For instance, he mentions that some students enjoy speaking actively and freely, whereas others prefer to speak only with particular interlocutors, and some would rather speak only when necessary. The study combined qualitative and quantitative approaches to data, collection, and the resultant discussions. That means that he designed and applied to the volunteers the instruments to obtain qualitative and quantitative data because the complexity of this subject can be analyzed in both ways and complement each other. So he was able to gain a deep understanding by using qualitative interviews in addition to the question to the quantitative questionnaire. 105 students from the Department of English, College of Language and Translation at King Khalid University participated in this study. All of them were about to graduate. One section of the questionnaire were designed to investigate the four different communicative contexts defined previously. Group discussions, speaking in meetings, interpersonal conversations, and public speaking. The other section of the questionnaire was focused on personality traits of the students. As usual, during a serious research, the qualitative information was properly processed by using statistical software. Now, let's talk about findings. The first finding of the study that reflects the preference of the students to speak in a foreign language when they have an opportunity can be summarized the next way. Number one, meetings are less are the less interesting scenario where students want to communicate in English. Number two, public speaking is also one of the situations that students tell they don't like. Number three, in a different way, the group discussion scenarios seem not to create so overwhelming feelings to the students. Number four, Definitely, interpersonal communications are considered the favorite scenario to communicate in English. Certainly, we can give more information about these findings of the study conducted by Daywood Ahmed Madi. For example, the students expressed that they were less willing to communicate in meetings because they perceive that meetings context requires formality. In addition, it was totally clear that they prefer group discussions and interpersonal communication. Also, it appears that the majority of the Saudi community feels confident enough to initiate communication and be talkative rather than be shy and silent. In more detail, this study says that many students, 60% stated that the most preferable scenario for them was the interpersonal conversation, and they expressed 
their willingness to initiate communication in that context. For example, six students said, I open quote, we don't like to be dumb, but we like to initiate talking about anything, even it is rubbish or nonsense, end of quote. And of course, we should understand that the reason why they say that is because they feel more relaxed with a friend than with a stranger. Conversely, the majority of the students, 70%, expressed less willingness to communicate in English in a meeting scenario. In fact, more than 50% of the interviewees justify their unwillingness to talk in meetings. They, say, they said that, I open quote, meetings are formal. So, it is better to listen and not to talk unless you are experienced." End of quote. Furthermore, other group of students showed positive reactions to work group discussions, but especially with their classmates in classrooms. Notably, some students expressed positive feelings regarding public speaking. For instance, four students said, I open quote, we are in the habit of speaking in public since we were in primary schools, end of quote. Here we can see an example of how the background of one student may have incidents in the interest to communicate in the target language. To wrap up this point, we can see how it was demonstrated in this study that the willingness to communicate in a L2 language is highly influenced either by the communicative scenario or by the type of interlocutors. We also learned that in the same way those students that participated in that study prefer to communicate more in interpersonal conversations and group discussions than in other contexts, the students in our country may have similar preferences. The students also showed greater willingness to communicate with friends than with strangers or acquaintances. Finally, this type of data helps teachers and future professionals in teaching English to understand better our students which is valuable. Now we know certain variables, variables that should be taken into account either or in our classroom activities or in our reflections in the future. Let's now move to facilitating willingness to communicate WTC with Oscar Moran. In this section, we will talk about some of the most effective strategies to engender and encourage willingness to communicate in math classrooms. Facilitating willingness to communicate, WTC. Learners with higher WTC will be more active learners who are more likely to utilize L2 in authentic communication by getting involved in language learning not only inside but also outside the classroom. These were words by Ken, 2005, dynamic emergence of situational willingness to communicate in a second language. Following this train of thought, I will go over some of the ways in which we as ESL and EFL teachers can engender and encourage and facilitate willingness to communicate. Cal, in his article, A Sociocognitive Perspective in Second Language Classroom Willingness to Communicate, says that classroom WTC embraces five forms of readiness to contribute to communication that is cognitive, linguistic, affective, motivational, and cultural readiness. Have you ever, as a teacher, received comments from students such as, I enjoy speaking classes, I like the topic, the topic was interesting, I had so much to say, I could talk about my personal experience, or I could express my opinions. Well, this was the case in the research conducted by Pollock and Mitskoska Wirtelag. 
in the research investigating the dynamic nature of L2 willingness to communicate. All of these expressions show a high level of readiness to speak. On the other hand, a low level of readiness to speak can be perceived when students make remarks like, the class starts too early, I had to get up at 6 in the morning, or I'm shy. Keep in mind that WTC is very closely related to motivation. Pollack and Mitskoska Wirtelak express that more profound understanding of motives underlying learners' readiness or reluctance to speak may help create classroom conditions that facilitate communication. In like manner, Garner and Lambert, 1959, say that integrative motivation is positive attitudes towards the target language and a willingness to integrate into the target language community, whereas instrumental motivation refers to practical reasons for learning a language, such as to gain social recognition or to get a better job. First of all, it is necessary to take into consideration the following. In order to provide students with much opportunity to talk, some researchers believe that the amount of time allocated to student talk has to be increased and the amount of time for teacher talk has to be reduced. As well, some time might be needed before learners can switch to what could be called the speaking mode. WTC may be affected if our English classes are early in the morning or too late in the afternoon. Remember as well, in our case, our students generally use their mother tongue, Spanish, between classes, in some content classes, and outside school. Also, keep in mind that resistance to societal values, for example, we have to evaluate if our subject matter, English, is valued or not in our society, country. Is math or science seen as more important? Something to think about. So, what are some of the best strategies now? Well, even though WTC is a volitional act, according to McTire, in other words, it got to be done because someone has decided or chosen to do so, even though this is like that, there are multiple strategies that we can use in order to make it happen. One strategy, as explained by Ahmad Nazari, in willingness, increasing willingness to communicate among English as a foreign language students, is known as IRF. I stands for an initiating move, a question asked by the teacher. R stands for the response, a short and simple response from the student. And F is follow-up or feedback from the teacher. Evaluative in nature, having either the form of an explicit acceptance or rejection of the student's response, or an implicit one. However, this strategy could have its drawbacks, limiting students' opportunities for initiating a conversation or a discussion. It could also create inequalities in distributing opportunities among students, and it might reduce independent thinking and self-determination. So be careful with this strategy. Another strategy is extending students' answers and linking the answers to students' experiences. Challenge their minds. This will trigger students' excitement and they could think of ideas to share and justify their opinions. Moreover, students should be given the freedom to choose the discussion topics themselves if possible. If not, the topics chosen by the teachers should suit students' interests, knowledge, or relate to their prior experiences. Teacher-related factors significantly influence learners' willingness or unwillingness to communicate. Take responsibility to engage all students even and equally in classroom activities. Involve your students in classroom activities as co-participants. For example, active learners who initiate conversations and discussions and co-construct knowledge in collaboration with the teacher and cooperation with other learners, using appropriate type of questioning and feedback to do so. Let students produce language without restrictions. In fact, McCruskey and Richmond, 1990, but that the larger number of interlocutors joining the conversation, the less willing a person is to speak. This finding is also supported by Zarina Bari and Apti, as a group of scholars found that most subjects in their study tend to communicate more when the number of group members is reduced. Before students are asked to complete tasks in large group settings, have them perform the task in pairs, 
This would reduce your anxiety levels. Familiarity. There was also evidence that an increase in WTC could be expected when participants worked with individuals that they knew well and with the proficiency level of other students was similar to their own. If allowed and possible, videotape yourself in the classroom, reflect on your interactional behavior to see if it has extended or limited the opportunity for your students to enter dialogues. This will increase your own awareness of what interaction strategies work or do not work with specific students. Also, make sure to include relevant examples in your classes. Create and use personally relevant class examples and also explain the course policies and expectations. Last but not least, build rapport with the students. Call them by name and also make sure that the class is suiting their interests. Know their hobbies and aspirations and try to use this to make effective classes. Wait time. Take the first step toward raising students' opportunity to talk by reducing the amount of teacher talk and allowing adequate wait time. Allocated longer periods of wait time can be an appropriate strategy to address hesitant learners and influence their WTC positively. According to Nurola Sarinabadi, in the research communicating in a second language, investigating the effect of teacher on learners' willingness to communicate, one student mentioned, I paused for some seconds. Suddenly, the teacher asked another one to continue. He thought I don't want to go on while I was thinking. Remarks like these tell us that it is important to provide students with the corresponding and proper way time for them to give us an answer. Immediate error correction should be avoided. Some learners wrote that teachers' immediate error correction enhanced their anxiety and made them feel insecure about making mistakes in future interactions. In fact, a student reported feeling ashamed and stressful to continue his speech due to teachers' immediate reaction to the error produced. This was expressed in the research done by Nurola Sarinabadi in communicating in a second language, investigating the effect of teacher on learners' willingness to communicate. Delayed error correction, DED, is the correction offered after learners have finished their speech. This kind of error modification seems to actually increase in the learners' WTC levels. Rahimi, 2012, also discovered the DED indeed enhances language students' verbal fluency and accuracy. I let my students carry out their discussion and correct each other within their group. My role here is as a listener. Later on, after they finish their discussion, corrective feedback would be given as a class. In addition, teacher support in the form of short, positive, and confirmatory phrases or smiling was found to positively affect learners' willingness to communicate. In the same research, Communicating in a Second Language by Nirola Sarinabadi, a student expressed, I love to speak in Professor C class. He carefully listens to you, and when you finish your speech, he thanks you for expressing your ideas. Yesterday, I said something in the classroom. To be honest, I wasn't sure whether it was true or not, but I become sure that it is true. When I saw the smile on the teacher's face, he's looking at me in words like, yes, and good. It is important to congratulate students for their efforts and praise them when necessary. Expressions like, awesome, great, congrats, you did an amazing job, make a big difference and play an important role in, this, in the student's willingness to communicate. Listening to students as a sign of valuing and respecting their contributions is also very important. It is also noted that instructors and teachers should create more chances for individuals to give feedback or correction to their peers, since this is actually sometimes perceived more positively, positively and appreciated more than the correction offered by the teachers themselves. So, some of the strategies that I just mentioned were IRF, initiating a move, response, and follow-up or feedback. 
This could be very helpful for you if you apply it. Now, also you could create materials that are familiar to students and that are relatable to them. They could be based on students' experiences or interests. Remember as well, the smaller group size indicates higher group cohesiveness, which secures the learners from an intense sense of insecurity. Within whole class context, students feel that they have less responsibility to speak. Keep this in mind. Cal 2014 considers that readiness to interact was the highest in small groups. 94.44%, followed by pairs, 90.47%, and evidently less so when required to speak in front of the whole class, 59.52%. It is also clear that their willingness to help was the most likely to increase when they interacted with somebody they know well, and much more so than in situations in which they were required to talk to a less familiar person 69.04% or the teacher, 59.52%. And these are some of the strategies that you can utilize in your classroom to facilitate willingness to communicate. Hopefully, it was useful to you. Last but not least, we have Eduardo Ramirez, who will tell us about how to assess and identify factors that inhibit students' WTC. Let's hear him out. Hello there, my name is Eduardo. Now that we've covered the main scenarios in which students are not willing to participate, it is also important for us to share with you um, the main factors that inhibit students' willingness to communicate and also um, how to identify those scenarios so that we teachers are better prepared for future classes that we could have with students. To continue, speaking plays an increasingly important role in language learning. This actually um, goes in line with the information I found that was created by researcher Skehan in the year 2014. He argues that learners talk in the target language is fundamental to achieve L2 proficiency. Therefore, the learning process should place more emphasis on how to use classroom tasks largely to encourage students to demonstrate their linguistic competence within conversations. On his research, McCroskey claims that willingness to communicate is proven as a predictor of classroom participation, since students with high ranking willingness to communicate participated more in classroom interactions and they are more likely to be ready to get involved in any interactions using their second language outside of the classroom, which is a goal that we teachers have in common, which is making our students or providing them with the abilities to communicate using their target language outside of the class. To continue, we have to know and be able to identify and understand that these factors could possibly come from different areas. We could have adversities from the teacher's actions, gestures, and abilities to build rapport with the students. Moreover, the classroom environment, location, distribution could also affect students. Likewise, the relationship established within classmates is a huge determiner. So we teachers have to be very picky when we check all these aspects because it can tell or they can tell us a lot of different things from our, our students or from our group. With that being said, we teachers have to be able to identify those specific factors and moments that inhibit students to participate during classes. 
With no further ado, I will share with you specific strategies we teachers should implement so that we can easily or with less difficulty, I would say, can identify those aspects. First of all, it is important for teachers to identify the topics that are more relatable, approachable, and enjoyable for our students. Content is very important because students can either have previous knowledge of some topics or they can completely unknown any topic. So we have to, and this is a must, we have to know our population. We have to remember that it is never going to be the same working with kids within 10 and 11 years than working with um, uh, uh, teenagers within 13 to 15. They are going to have different likes, they are going to enjoy different things, and they are going to care about different aspects. So we have to know our population. So what we can do in these cases is that we can ask. We can ask our students what do they like. If they like movies, what kind of movies? If they like music, which artists? What kind of music? Which genres? If they like uh, sports, which sports and why? So we have to be able to ask them and identify what they like. In that way, we are going to be able to give our classes a different approach that is going to be catchy enough for our students to care and to talk and communicate. Having a topic that suits the students' expect expectations is going to help them be willing to communicate and participate in the classroom. So, we teachers have the duty of knowing our population, knowing what they like, what they don't, and what they enjoy more. Moreover, identifying which students are ready and which students are not is going to help us wonderfully. Willingness to communicate addresses the readiness of learners to engage in communication using their second language at a particular time with a specific person or people when given the opportunity. The state of readiness is established as a result of a combination of several factors lack of anxiety and communicative competence which develop learners self-confidence in using the target language and intention to engage in communication therefore teachers should be able to determine when and who is ready to participate for these reasons teachers have to be able to discern and understand not that not all students acquire knowledge and confidence at the same level and with the same speed. So, we teachers cannot classify all of our students in the same categories. We have to know that we have students who are always in front, students who are always very quick, the students who have a lot of ideas and students who are always willing to participate. We know that those students that we have are very helpful because they enhance participation a lot. But on the other hand, we have students who are never going to participate. We have these kind of students who are always quiet, who are just part of the class, but they don't participate. But they pay attention, yes but they don't share what they think. And in the middle, we have those students who they tend to participate, but they mostly do it when they are asked to do so. So we have to be able to discern who belongs to which category and who is going to benefit from what. So one of these strategies to increase participation in this specific case is to get to know your students have a list know who is always participating know who is not and know who is participating when they are asked 
do so. So we should implement this list and in that way we are going to be able to determine when these people are ready to participate. Take a look at your classes. Have you seen those cases in which we have a student who is always raising the hand to participate? And on the other hand, we have a student who spontaneously and rarely participates. But we have, or we make a question, and the student who is never participating raises his hand. But the one who is always participating he raises his hand and he immediately starts to talk. I've seen some cases in which we teachers forget about the one that raised the hand first, and that's wrong. So what we have to do in these cases as teachers is that after the student who is participating finishes, then we go and ask the other one immediately what their participation was going to be. In that way, that student is going to feel valid and that person is going to feel like their opinion matters. The third point is identifying strategies to be a more likable teacher. It's no secret that students prefer to participate when they sense a connection with their teachers. Therefore, we need to be empathetic, friendly, and approachable. These three characteristics would make your teaching process a lot easier. As a matter of fact, researcher Keio, on his 2011 research, identifies that they are likely to be willing to interact more when they like their teachers. Moreover, according to Sarina Vadis, 2014 study, students tend to be more active using their second language in their classrooms when their teachers show them support to talk. For example, giving students sufficient time to think before answering questions or allow allowing students to choose topics of discussion that are interesting for them. So, being a good teacher pays off, and that's a reality. Being a nice teacher is even more rewarding. So being nice is going to be our strategy or one of these strategies that we are going to implement in order to be a better teacher and in order for our students to communicate and participate more. What happens if we have a case in which a student made a huge mistake when talking and instead of asking them kindly to correct the mistake and helping them correcting that mistake, we make fun of the student or we say, no, you're wrong, this is incorrect and you did a bad job. Words can be our enemy or our friend depending on how we use them. So we have to be very careful. We have to be to use supportive words. We have to support our students. It doesn't matter if they made a mistake. At least they participate. So if they make the mistake, what we do is that we go correct, help them, and we continue. We move on. But we are not going to punish a student just because they made a mistake, which is something that could possibly happen to everybody. To continue, active learning strategies like cooperative learning groups offer students the opportunity to work together with their peers and discuss what they are learning rather than having to take notes and listen to the teacher. So in this case, if you already know your population, and you know what they like. And you can see there that you can put, in, put them into groups to have small discussions. That is going to help you a lot. We teachers have to implement these kind of strategies. And in that way, we can get them to talk more. 
when we create small groups, we are creating a totally different environment for our students. We are saying that they have to work with different people and with small groups of people. So they are going to get to know each other even better. By getting to know each other, they are going to develop confidence as well. And they are going to trust each other, which is going to set up your environment in the mood of the classroom in a positive way. To conclude, I would like to share with you the last idea. We teachers need to be very aware of the image that we portray. So we have to take a look at the reaction that our students have when they see us. Do they look happy? Do they look scared? Do they look confident? What is the expression that you see in their faces? That is going to help you a lot because we need to know how they see us so that we can either change what's wrong or continue to implement what we consider good. So, what you can do in these cases is that there can be a very specific day in the week in which you will stand more in front of the glass and in that way you are going to be able to see their reactions. So, do it. Apply this technique and see their reactions. So that way you're going to be able to identify what areas of opportunity you also have as a teacher. Final conclusions. By knowing about WTC, teachers can not only be aware of the way to tackle this issue, but also try to understand the different variables that may be affecting students' willingness to speak freely and comfortably in class. In words of Zarin Abadi, communicating in a second language, investigating the effect of teacher on learner's willingness to communicate, and willingness, reluctance to communicate, should not be interpreted as a bad thing because it may be reflective of individual learning styles. Uncovering what conditions are the most conducive to stimulating interaction in the classroom is without a doubt a pursuit worth undertaking, given the difficulties that many teachers encounter trying to get their learners to speak. L2WTC is highly influenced by the communicative scenario and by the type of interlocutors. From a general view, students tend to feel less comfortable with meetings and public speaking scenarios. They usually tend to react more positively to group discussions and interpersonal conversations. Students show willingness to communicate with people they know prior or they have aspects in common like friends and people with similar interests. WTC has to do with integrative and instrumental motivational factors that foster a teaching environment where WTC happens more organically. Considering how society and students perceive the language we are teaching and our role as teachers when it comes to increasing students' desire to communicate in the target language plays an important role before thinking of strategies to elicit this communication. Classes should be relevant to students and relatable. They should suit students' interests, knowledge, or relate to their prior experiences. What is more, delayed error correction and wait time should be provided during the class. Teachers' recognition and praise also works as a great tool to encourage WTC as well as constructive feedback from both the instructors and equally as important from their peers. Overall, having the best attitude and building rapport with the students will always create an atmosphere where students feel safe and comfortable to share their ideas. As well, image can impact a teacher either positively or negatively. Observing your student's reaction is key to understand what we as teachers need to improve. And remember to apply the rule of thumb. Tell me and I will forget. Teach me and I will remember. Involve me and I will learn. Thank you very much. We hope that our presentation was productive to you and that you're now more familiar with the topic of L2 Willingness to Communicate, WTC and Teaching. Please feel free to comment and leave your observations. Looking forward to your presentations. References. <laughs>